Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to weld a lead sheet with a, a lap joint. Now, um, before you do this, you should really um, look at the video doing butt joints first. You should be proficient in doing a butt joint. Now, when you're doing a lap joint, it's the same as a butt joint, but you have to have one side of the lead one centimetre cleaned and the other half a centimetre cleaned. And then the half a centimetre goes on top of the one centimetre, so you finish off with an area looking from above um, roughly one centimetre because you're going to use the top sheet as a welding rod to weld onto the bottom sheet. You can also, on the horizontal lap welding, you can also use a rod as well and you can use one, uh, one row of weld or two rows of welds. Um, in this video um, I'm going to show you how to do it um, with uh, uh, using a, the sheet as the rod and not with a filler rod. Um, as you can see on the right, that's the butt joint we've done on the video before. If you look at that video, it'll tell you how to set up um, the torch and um, what to look for uh, in the world. So we won't go over that again in this in this uh, video to save time. Um, what I'm going to show you now, this is the first weld you see at the top there, is the single uh, using a rod. Here's the butt joint we done in the last video. Okay, and this is both sorts of welds. The top in, in the picture is showing uh, the lap weld using a filler rod uh, with one pass, and the second bit is using the sheet itself as a filler rod. Um, as I said, we're going to show you how to do use it, uh, doing a lap weld do it using the, the sheet as a filler rod. Now. I'm just showing you this picture to show you the colour that you should be looking for and that's this light grey colour with the dark r dark ring around the outside and if you notice the um, the welding torch uh, has got a very small um, flame just like a little tiny uh, golf ball. Now here you see I'm preheating the sheet yeah, melting the bottom sheet and the top sheet so it's just tacky together and now I'm going to start the weld yeah, and it's like an action, a C action, drag in the sheet down from the top sheet onto the bottom sheet and making the world. Yeah, simple as that. What you've got to be careful of is not to use too much sheet. If you use, if you drag off too much metal off the top sheet, you're going to have undercut. And if you hold the heat on the bottom sheet too long, you're going to have undercut as well on the bottom sheet. So the trick of it is to get the right amount of lead, which you would just have to practice for and you should end up with the weld being higher than the sheet. If it's undercut then the weld's going to be weak and if it's undercut on the bottom sheet it's going to be weak as well. So what you're looking at is to have a nice weld with a bit of height above the sheet, above the top sheet. Now you can see the action, you can see how close you have to get to weld lead. You have to be one or two millimeters above the molten pool. Yeah, and it's a C-like action, you're dragging the top sheet onto the bottom sheet and melting it into the bottom sheet. Okay. Now it gets a bit tricky when you get to the corner um, because if you're doing a, a, a 90 degree corner as we're doing here not a filleted corner with an angle um, it is actually hollow so you have to be very careful on the corner. Now uh, if you were doing a new build you'd have a fillet on there and you'd have a 45 degree angle maybe a 2 inch wooden fillet so you can go up at an angle and that is a bit easier. But of course you can't have a very sharp 90 degree angle with lead because um, over the years with the sun expanding and contracting it, it will actually split if it's a very sharp. So you have to have a nice curve on it like we have here. So when you get to the corner, you've got to be very careful you don't melt through it. Yeah, this just takes practice but it is possible. So now you, if you notice in a minute the angle of the torch is going to change. There you go. Now I'm starting going up. Yeah, so I am actually pointing the torch or the blow the nozzle of the, of the torch, I'm pointing it at the sheet, yeah, at the top sheet. So it's got a slight angle, it's not directly like with the butt weld, it's not directly in line with the weld. Yeah, same technique as vert with vertical as horizontal, a small C, you're dragging the lead off the top sheet and welding it into the bottom sheet. Again, the trick is to, to practice so you're not, not taking too much and you're undercutting it. Yeah, which you probably will do at the beginning, it's just a matter of practicing it. Okay, so you can see the nice grey colour again, 
and the lead is really shiny like a mirror which it should be with all lead welding and that tells you that the flame's right if those two things aren't there if you haven't got a shiny mirror like metal when it's molten and you haven't got that light grey with a dark grey ring around it on the uh, lead as you can clearly see here then the flame pitch is wrong and you must adjust your flame again um, in the butt welding um, video we went into more detail about the uh, how to adjust the flame just go over it again quickly here you've got 2 millibar on your bottle acetylene, 2 millibar on your bottle oxygen we're using a number 2 nozzle and uh, to start off with you start off with um, about 2 to 3 inches of um, acetylene then bring your oxygen in until you've got a nice tight round ball like a little tiny golf ball or ping pong ball and if it goes pointed you've got too much oxygen and if it's got a feather you've got too much acetylene now you have cleaned it again with a bit of hemp and you can see the world more clearly now you can see it's proud yes yeah, so that means we've got no undercut now it's not extremely pretty like the butt weld um, because I don't do this for a living now if I was to practice enough on this I could get it looking just as good as the butt weld which you'll see in a minute but I don't do this for a living to see the butt weld there uh, you know with a, with a couple of hours practice I could get it looking as, as nice as that but you can still get a job um, you know that's a perfectly acceptable weld it's just not as pretty as I'd like it if, uh, if I could uh, you know do a bit more welding um, I could get it looking a lot prettier so here you can see now I'm doing one that I started earlier this is right to left and not left to right so the top sheets coming from the right the one we done before the top sheet was coming from the left it's very important to practice on both uh, whether you're left handed or right handed um, you've got to be able to do both because depending on how the lead on the roof is situated um, if you're doing a repair or whatever you could come across both left and right so don't be surprised uh, practice it beforehand there's nothing worse than going on a job and making a, a complete boo boo of yourself yeah and with enough practice you can get it looking um, you know a lot even this is a bit a bit, little bit raggedy but like I say it's still good enough to get your job it's still good enough um, to be accepted by the clerk of works or whoever the, the architect and it's a good strong world so there's no problem with that uh, just the prettiness uh, will just come with practice okay so same technique and you see the flame again nice round tight ball, see how close I am, you have to be one or two millimetres above the molten metal if you lift off you can have all sorts of problems, the world's going to spread out it's going to undercut here, there and everywhere and it's going to look horrible so here again you can see uh, the staining on the on the lead from the flame nice light grey colour, here I've cleaned it up so you can see the world a bit better yeah, see it's not that bad, it's ok, it's quite acceptable but you could get that absolutely perfect if you a few hours practice once you've learned the technique, yeah, it's just um, to get your hands steady. Okay. Yeah, that's how we we set it up. Obviously, if it's on a roof, it's going to be big, big pieces of lead, but it's just the same. It's just in miniature. Okay, so there you go. That's the lap world, horizontal and vertical.